In this session, we are going to discuss UML architecture. Any real world system is used by different users and the users can be developers, testers, business people, analysts and many more. Hence, before designing a system, the architecture is made with different perspectives keeping in mind. The most important part is to visualize the system from the perspective of different viewers because here we are having multiple different types of viewers so that's why as different type of viewers are there different types of users are there like developers testers business people common people so that's why keeping all these things in mind the respective architecture has to be designed the better we understand the better we build the system you will plays an important role in defining different perspectives of a system. Under UML, we are having so many different diagrams in the previous video. We have discussed that one and each and every diagram has got its own field of application. So none can be replaced by others. So that's why these diagrams are to be built. These diagrams are to be drawn so that the UML architecture should be firm enough and should be suitable for all sorts of users. These perspectives are design, implementation, process and deployment. So there are four different perspectives are there and they are design, implementation, process and deployment. So keeping all these things in mind, we should go for the UML architecture design. So let us go for one by one and that will clear our doubts and conceptions. So at first we are going for the use case view. So that means this one we are going to discuss right now. So describe behavior of the system by its end users and analysts and testers. So use case diagram, before drawing the use case diagram, we should gather all the requirements. So when the requirement list is ready, then we shall go for refinement of the requirement list and final requirement list should be made available. And then depending upon those requirement list, the UML diagram on use case diagram will be prepared. So shapes the system architecture and statics aspects are captured in the use case diagram. Dynamic aspects are captured in the interaction and the activity diagrams. So here you see, here we are having this use case view. So now we are going for the other aspects. So now we are going for the design view. Describe classes, interfaces and collaborations that form the vocabulary and then support functional requirements and statics aspects are captured in class and object diagrams and then dynamic aspects are captured in interaction, state chart and activity diagrams. So that is known as our design view. So in this particular design view, we describe this one using classes, interfaces, collaborations and form the vocabulary and it supports the functional requirements it depicts the static view of the system and dynamic view will be obtained through this interaction diagram the uh, we are we having the respective uh, interaction diagram means we are having the uh, sequence diagram and collaboration diagram and then activity diagram state chart diagrams and so on so now let us go for the process view Describes threads and processes that form the system's concurrency and synchronization mechanisms. We know that lightweight process is known as a thread and thread can be executed in parallel in simultaneous. So describes the threads and processes that form the system's concurrency and the synchronization mechanisms. So synchronization means which process will be executed first and then which process will be executed next. So that is the that is the ordering is known as the synchronization. Addresses the performance, scalability and throughput. So static and dynamic aspects are captured as same as the design view with these active classes. So here we are having this process view which depicts the dynamic view of the system. Next one we are having this implementation view. So describes the components and files that are used to assemble and addresses configuration management. Static aspects are captured in component diagram and dynamic aspects are captured in the interaction state chart and activity diagrams. 
So, this is the respective implementation view of this UML architecture. Last one is our deployment view. So, encompasses the nodes that form the system's hardware topology on which the system will execute, on which the system will be deployed. So, what are the different nodes that are existing and, and interconnectivity between these nodes? And address distribution, delivery and installation of the parts. Static aspects are captured in deployment diagrams and dynamic aspects are captured in the interaction state chart and the activity diagrams. So, in this way we have discussed all this design view, implementation view, deployment view and process view and also the use case view. So, these are the pillars of UML architecture. So, I think now the things are getting clear to you. Please watch all the videos in this tutorial to have a complete grip over this UML and its different features. Thanks for watching this video.